leads us right to my deep pleasure, which is to introduce our speaker. Her reputation precedes her. <laughs> I hope that's in a good way. <laughs> and this song has blessed us with her presence many times here at the fellowship, both attending, taking part, as well as sharing and speaking. And I'm just going to tell you two or three things that you may not know about her. She has a doctorate of ministry. She is a minister. She has a master's degree of uh, public administration and has worked with body centered gestalt therapy. And I know that Rainier, is it, do you pronounce it Rainier? Rainier, the razor near Mount Rainier. Okay. <laughs> That's why some people got confused on that. It's spelled it's differently. Spelling, it's spelled right. differently. But a rose by any other name was it's still, still a Rainier. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so now we, we know, we have it right. Okay. All right, I, what I know about her is she encourages people greatly to be there, to find out about themselves, um, to find out who they really are, and to share from that heart space with compassion, patience, sense of humor, and also creativity. Uh, and she does, she leads many ceremonies, including drumming circles, <coughs> uh, weddings, uh, I believe, uh, you were the minister for Louis Purdy and his wife. We just found that out yesterday in a small world. And, and so she just delights us with her spirit, and you're going to be even more delighted now as you see her sharing and how she's going to lead us with what we're doing today. Welcome. Hmm. Thank you. That was very kind, Susan. I um, have been drumming for about 30 years. Some of you know this story. I'll keep it brief, so if you've heard it before, you can add your own details. Mm. I went to a blind date on a blind date 30 years ago, and somebody said, well, why don't you go to a drum circle? And I talked to the person, and they said, well, okay, it doesn't sound like a first date to me, but we can go. <laughs> so I went to the drum circle, and I had a blind date. They're sort of kind of two different things, but we were supposed to be together. But anyway, I kicked him to the curb and kept the drumming. Um, so. <laughs> drumming for me has been an ancient call back to who I uh, was, who I am. And I prior to that time didn't have any connection with drumming. And going to that circle, it was a circle called Belize and Magoon, and they met in Norfolk. It was a, a circle of women, and they drummed for prayer. If you had a baby, they drummed while you were in, in delivery. If you had something that passed, they would drum for a certain period of time to ease your spirit's passing. If there was a celebration, they would drum. And it just spoke to me on so many levels. It, it grounded me, it helped enliven me, it just felt like it was in my blood. Shortly after, I had an opportunity to work with some Native American shamans from North Dakota. And I didn't know them and they didn't know me. And I went to the appointed meeting place in Hampton and she said, I don't know what's wrong but we can't do your healing here. We have to go to the beach and we have to have drumming. She said, I've never had this before. <laughs> and uh, we did go to a private beach and she managed to have some wonderful Native American music for us. And these wonderful, gigantic, blue spiritual beings appeared and assisted with that healing that I received. And I, from that moment on, it's, drumming has been very significant to me. Drumming is a wonderful tool. Drumming has existed in all cultures. And in the beginning, drumming was used as communication, as celebration, and to bring attention. And through the matriarchal culture, it was an activity of joining, an activity of celebration. And then later, as things changed, in the patriarchal culture, it became a call to war. So I find it a little humorous 
that many archaeologists in the 1940s and earlier kept discovering these little miniature figurines. And the figurine showed a woman with a frame drum, excuse me, and they, the figurine showed a woman holding something like this. And at that period in time, most of the archaeologists were male. And in, in hundreds of references, when this figurine was found in all different cultures, the male archaeologist said it was a woman holding a cake. Now, <laughs> because it wasn't thought that a woman would hold a drum because it was seen as a drum was seen as a powerful symbol. But let me ask you women and you men who cook, if you spent your resources making a cake, would you go around carrying it like this? <laughs> The wonderful thing about drumming is that it entrains the left and the right hemispheres of your brain. And there have been uh, research and scientific studies that show that cortisol, the stress hormone, is reduced through drumming. And a sense of peace and ease uh, usually returns to people after a half hour of drumming. And so most of us are either left-brained or right-brained. In our culture, as we study spirituality, we, our brain becomes more entrained. And so that your left brain and your right brain work together for a full brain experience. And through the drumming experience, people sometimes feel like they've gone into a trance or that they're altered. And that's your brain working at a different vibration. People report feeling relaxed. Some people report feeling energized. Some people have better dreams or different dreams after drumming. So just have your own awareness. There are different kinds of drum circles. Arthur Lopez does a wonderful drum circle on the beach that some of you may have attended. Arthur does external drumming. So he's raising your energy, he's getting you fired up, and he's wanting you to dance around the fire. And the drumming that I'm gonna share with you today is the inward spiral. Back to yourself, back to your soul. So. All drumming is, is fabulous, and there are different reasons and different ways for drumming to be appreciated. So in this drumming situation, drum etiquette is that you should never drum louder than your neighbor. <laughs> Some circles, it almost becomes a contest who can drum loudest. So in, in our context of drum etiquette, you should always be able to hear your neighbor. And we never beat a drum, we play a drum. And that's a difference in, in styles and energy and drumming. So there are lots of drums and lots of instruments. In a minute, I'm gonna um, ask people to come forward and take some and other people to pass them out. And we're going to do some drumming and some chanting as time allows. And then we will have um, a closing part of this, of the service, and then we'll move on with the rest of the service. So, who wants to be brave enough to come forward and get some drums? And who would like to help pass out drums to people who were not brave enough to sit on the front row? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can also play the drums with strikers. So if you see strikers, this is a striker. You may get one of these. Um, use the striped stick. Nope, the striped one. Keep coming towards the black. Nope, I'm sorry, it's right. See the guy in black? See his left hand? See the striped stick with black stripes on it? That. Anybody else?
once you have a musical instrument, and what this gentleman has is a, a fine from the thrift store, and this is an old match stick holder for a fireplace, and it's a percussion instrument. If you bang on that, would you do that for us? Yes. It makes a great sound. So you can use anything. Anything. Good. Once you have an instrument, if you'll take your seat again, and I know it's like being three years old again and having a new toy. <laughs> so just bring yourself to stillness. Bring yourself to stillness. I know you can do it. <laughs> when we play a drum, when you play a drum, you can use your striker. Or you can use your hand, and you, if you're playing a drum with your hand, you use the top of the four fingers. So you're actually hitting with your fingers versus your palm. And the intention is to bring your hand down into the drum and then pull out the sound. So you have a, your hand opens up the drum and then it pulls back. Okay. And there are, some very enthusiastic people, thank you. Um, <laughs> so there are a vast majority of instruments in this room. We have shakers, we have the frame drum, which is one of the original drums. This is my only drum other than the one that Jerry has, which is also a thrift store find. Um, the frame drum is, this one is a Remo, R-E-M-O, if you're interested. This is my only synthetic drum. Synthetic drums are nice if you drum outdoors. Bring yourselves to stillness, thank you. If you, <laughs> if you think that you might drum outdoors, you might want to get a Remo drum. All my other drums have, other than Jerry's and this one, have natural heads which is either a goat skin or a cow skin. And some of the drums, let's see, I saw somebody in the back row. Young lady, would you hold yours up? Yes, and this gentleman. These two drums are from Africa, and they were having a tree shortage. So they wanted to still produce drums, but what could they use as a, as a frame? So these are recycled car parts. So there's metal around the two drums. Hold yours up to, again, to both of you. So that's another version of a frame drum, and there's actual fur on both of these drums. Once we drum once, and, and drumming is very interesting, it's like building a community. So it's like a little wild and crazy, and then it takes time for people to move into rhythm and harmony and find your place in there. We'll switch up the drums, let people do it a different way. But I can tell stillness has been held at best for as long as possible. <laughs> So we must drum. And I'm going to ask if who, who is brave would like to start a rhythm. And what we're going to do, start something slow and easy, and then I want you to layer into that something that feels in companionship with that. So we're not drowning each other out. This is not a competition. We're playing our drums together. Yes, Susan. Susan's going to start a rhythm for us, so listen to it for her a few seconds, and then begin to layer in your own, okay? Thank you. Start slow. Start slow. Mm -hmm.
This is a rain stick from Brazil, and each rain stick has a different sound. And rain sticks are ancient instruments. This one is a piece of cactus, and all the little divots are ten nails that were drove into the cactus this way and the bottom is then sealed and seeds and small rocks are entered into the top and then the top is sealed and the rain that you hear is the rocks and the seeds hitting those ten nails. And it depends on the size of the nails and what you put inside, what sound you'll get. So, thank you. You guys did great for a first time. So, would you like to switch up your instruments or you're happy with what you have? Does anybody want the frame drum? This is called a thunder drum because it sounds really loud and it vibrates. Woo! He's got a big ring stick over there. And to Matthew, we might not have played with the ring sticks too much. <laughs> Does anybody want the frame drum that I have now? Are we ready? Does somebody else feel called to lead a rhythm? Let's pretend, would you like to lead one? And lead something slow and gentle so we can all layer in. And if you think that somebody might be noticing how you're drumming, just close your eyes and nobody can see you, okay? <laughs> So go ahead and please.
We had some singers, and that always adds to the vibration. Thank you. I'm going to teach you a chant. So just let your instruments be still for a moment. And after we sing the chant two or three times, if you would like to layer in your instrument, please do. Many talents, as Susan said, I was gifted with. Singing was not one of them. I don't let that stop me at all. I hope you, hope you won't let it stop you. So take a deep breath. And open your heart. And send the energy of this song to every human being on our planet. And just listen one or two times until you catch the words. <clears throat> my throat chakra is really getting some work done, so forgive my coughing. But I'm grateful because I need some work on my throat chakra, so thank you. Human am I, spirit am I, I am the instrument within my soul. I have no beginning and I have no end. Oh, this I am. Human am I, spirit am I, I am the instrument within my soul. I have no beginning and I have no end. Oh, the
Thank you. And with our time, I'm going to play something else from the phone. And then I am going to teach you another chant. And again, you can layer in uh, singing and your music after you listen to it a few times. So I'm going to ask you to still yourselves and your instruments for just a moment. And then ask you to close your eyes and intend for your heart to be open. And as I am working the technology, you continue to breathe gently and easily. will be our closing chant due to our time. And again, if I start coughing, carry on. And once we sing a couple times, you can layer in your music, please. Spirit of the wind, carry me. Spirit of the wind, carry me. Spirit of the wind, carry me home to myself. Now carry me, 
Thank you so much for letting me be your speaker today.